Hello everyone. Uh, Friday we look at uh, the immigration news and see what might be of interest to our clients. We noticed that this administration is pushing the Supreme Court to make a decision about DACA. So we thought we would talk about that today. I'm Raluca Hania and I am an immigration attorney and I'm here with my office manager, Nina Clear. Hi everybody. So first, tell us what DACA is. DACA stands for Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals. And that means basically that people who are brought in the United States as children uh, have, um, they are here, they were brought here illegally and uh, have um, the United States cannot deport them at this time. So their deportation is deferred. That's that's the term. And any yes. action towards deporting them yes. is deferred. So, okay. Yes. And, and probably we should let everybody know is that one of the big things, and we'll go into this a little bit more, is that when they initially put this into play, they said any information people signed up with would not be given to other agencies. That's correct. To be used against them. Okay. So often when we talk about immigration, we talk about legal status, putting that in quotes, legal status or being out of status, again, in quotes. So, and that's when your legal status, when you're out of status is because your legal status expired, right? That's correct. Okay. Yes. So what status do the DACA holders have? Um, so the DACA holders are not here legally and DACA does not give them an actual legal status. The only, um, some, some also are arguing that DACA is unconstitutional and basically these people have um, no other protection right now other than DACA. Um, so, but at any time Congress can, I mean, the the government can decide to um, proceed with deportation against them. Okay. So they could be deported at any time. So DACA is not a path to citizenship. So no. Signing up for it doesn't get them a green card, doesn't get them citizenship, and they can't change their status. It's not, it's not at all a path to citizenship. Okay. Um, so anyone here under DACA um, may be deported. Um, this might keep them from even being able to enter the, the U.S. again. Um, it's hard to accept because many of the people registered on the DACA see themselves as more American than citizen of their own country because most of them came here as children and they grew up in the United States. Right. So they speak English. They went to school here. And DACA also lets them go to college, right? Yes. It lets them get an education. Yes. And so that's one thing is a lot of them are getting their their college education now. Yes. And that would stop that. So tell me if, how DACA started. So there were discussion for a long time how to protect these uh, young um, people who were brought here in the United States as so they, children. So right. they had no say intention in or no say on how they got here. So, so they weren't like a little five-year-old that was like, I want to break the law and climb a fence and exactly. jump into the U.S. Exactly. I mean, what was their choice? Their right. parents brought them here, some of them, they were babies. So um, there was a lot of talk about this and um, there was, in the end, there was no, there was no law that was approved by the Congress during the Obama administration. So... President Obama signed an executive presidential memorandum, uh, which is actually has the force of a law in June 2012. And besides making it so deportation doesn't start against uh, against them, it allows uh, these these uh, DACA recipients to apply for a work permit uh, called the Employment Authorization Document (EAD) and. Um, they have to reapply every two years for the renewal of DACA. And with DACA, they they when they apply, 
this is something we can cover in another video, but really briefly, they have to have come to the U.S. under 18 within a certain time period, and they can't have any crimes, Yes, you know, except for very minor misdemeanors, but things like that. I mean, they can be disqualified from DACA as yes, well. Yes, not, not everyone qualifies for DACA, and okay. they have to have at least high school degree. So I, I did have a client who didn't qualify because he didn't have high school a high school degree. Oh, okay. So, um, okay. So then what's going on with it now? Uh, the Trump administration has been pushing to rescind the memorandum. Um, so they can, we presume, deport anyone who is here under DACA. Uh, they did this on September the 5th, 2017. However, due to um, district court orders from New York and California, USCIS resume accepting applications for renewals, but they are still not accepting any new applications. So anyone who has not been granted DACA before, they cannot apply at this time. Okay. And so the Trump administration, like I just want to clarify, they rescinded it September 5th, but then they were sued. And so there was basically right. an injunction put against an injunction, meaning they had to stop and couldn't enforce that. And what the courts have said is that they can, anybody under it can keep reapplying, reapplying. but the new people can't. Yes. So they have to reapply every two years. Okay. And the other day we were at a CLE that you presented and somebody was like, oh, those are the dreamers. But the DREAM Act and DACA are different, right? They are different. Okay. So yes. tell me a little bit about that. So the so DREAM stands for Development, Relief, and Education for Alien Minors Act. And it is an act that has been proposed several times since 2001, but has failed to pass, um, to be passed. And it would put people who came here illegally as children, um, they would put them under a TPS or temporary protective status. Uh, that means that they have a conditional status and they move to permanent residency and citizenship uh, because both DACA and the DREAM, the DREAM Act discusses the same demographic of people. Um, many often think that they are the same thing, but they are not. Uh, DACA just stops any deportation proceedings right now, that, but the DREAM Act actually provides a way for the individuals to become legal. Uh, many people refer to everyone under this umbrella as dreamers, and there may be uh, some confusion. That might be why people think DACA is dreamers, because they kind of are, except DACA just has no legal status. Exactly. Whereas dreamers would give them a legal, the DREAM Act would give them a legal status. Yes. And they would have to go through vetting and everything and pay for it, so, you know, it's not a bad thing to tell your your congressman that you would support that because that, they've been here living in the U.S. Why not? They've been working. They've been going to school. And this is where many people, um, maybe they don't understand what who are these people. They are children. They are young people that were brought here. Again, I repeat, they are brought here by uh, their parents or their relatives. Um and so they, they, you cannot, even right now in all the other areas of law, when you talk about children, uh, they can be um, guilty of a crime if they didn't have the intention to commit that crime. So they were children, they didn't have the intention to break any laws, but now they are here. This is their reality and um, it would be a good thing for the United States to help with this situation because right. um, they are educated um, people that would really contribute a lot to the to the economy of the United States. Right. And how many people right now, these are the people that registered under DACA, how mm -hmm. many are there? Um, as of January 2017, 740,000 people have registered through DACA. And we know there's probably more who didn't register through DACA because they're they're scared, right? Many, many didn't register because they were scared. They were scared that sending their information to USCIS would put 
they, them and their family in jeopardy. Right. So tell me kind of what this all means. So we had Obama signed it into law, Trump signed it out of law, but the mm -hmm. court said, no, we're, we're still going to, we have an injunction, so we're going to stop it from ending immediately. Yes. Right? Yes. So what does that mean to people that are under it right now? So any anyone who has anyone who was approved for DACA before the rescission by Trump is still eligible for the extensions until further notice. But this could be withdrawn at any time. Okay, and there are other parts to DACA, like getting advanced parole and what you need to do if you want to obtain legal status. Mm -hmm. And we're not going to address those today. We'll probably do lives on them another time, but let's just talk about the news this week. What's going on with DACA? Uh, so this administration through the Justice, Justice Department uh, is pushing for the Supreme Court to make a decision about DACA, whose ending was stopped in the injunction in the Ninth, Circ uh, Ninth District Court, which is in uh, California. So the Ninth District Court hasn't yet made a decision? No. They only issued, like you said, a temporary injunction. Uh, that means they stop any any change to DACA program until they make the actual decision in the case. So they require the government to keep processing renewals until a final decision on the merits of the case. And other courts have said they think DACA is unconstitutional, but again, uh, no court has made a final decision. Okay, why do you think that is? Um, I mean, could be, there are so many reasons. I'm not sure um, if they are trying to see what other court decides or it's just taking a long time to write their decision with all the supporting case law. Uh, one of the issues may be that um, the Justice Department keeps entering new requests and appealing parts of the case and the justices are dealing with those uh, in piecemeal way rather than being able to decide the whole thing. Um, in the New York case, final uh, written arguments, uh, they were due on October 5th, 2018, and oral arguments had not yet been scheduled. Okay, so they, they haven't even gotten all of the arguments from either side. Mm -hmm. And frankly, removing it from being DACA, it's just a presidential memorandum. So while we have a system of checks and balances, they probably want to be really careful about taking power completely away from a president, you think? Yes, probably that's one of the reasoning yeah. behind it. Okay, um, so usually a party can't appeal a decision if there hasn't been a final order, like it can't appeal a decision to the Supreme Court. Yes. So we, we have to go in layers and we have like the state court and then the district court and then the federal court and then the Supreme Court, yes. right? Mm -hmm. And so, but here, here they tried to kind of jump the gun, right? Yes. Okay. <laughs> yes, the, um, they tried to appeal it directly. Basically, they tried to appeal it directly to the Supreme Court without going through the appellate court um, and before there was even a final decision. The only thing they had yes. was the temporary injunction, right? Yes. Okay. So that happened in January 2018, but the Supreme Court issued a denial in February 2018 to this request and said they must go to the Court of Appeals, uh, which um, in California is a more liberal court that they might want to avoid. Uh, this is what the Justice Department is asking again for the Supreme Court to force the judge in California, in the California case, to make a decision so they can review it before um, they stop working in June. Okay, and by they you mean the Supreme Court this, like goes off session or I forget what they call it exactly. Yes. But <laughs> they, they work until June and then they take a break. They the, have their summer recess. Exactly. And then they don't start again. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it sounds like this might be a really scary time if you're a DACA recipient. Yeah, it was for a while now. <laughs> um, and that is one of the other issues that is being litigated at this time. The original DACA memorandum uh, said that people who filed for this status uh, would not have their information shared 
for enforcement purposes, meaning no other agency could be given this information um, so they can use it to start deporting uh, people. Um, Trump's administration wants to use this information to actually start deporting people. So basically making DACA not only to have been a waste, but a danger for everyone who signed up, who signed up under it. You can imagine that it's almost like when they make Jews register for World War II and then use those registries to find them and put them in concentration camp. Uh, people try to obtain a legal status and now Trump and the Justice Department want to use that against them. So, so that's one of the uh, cases that's going on right now. Not yes. in California, I think it's in Maryland, but there's cases in New York and Maryland and Texas and California and there all over, of, yes. right? There so, are a lot of cases right now pending. Um, and DC, is there anything else that's going on with this? Yes, uh, DC court has rejected the government's argument about why DACA should end, not once but twice, and it looks like it may reinstate DACA fully. And there is also current litigation with several states in Texas trying to get uh, DACA thrown out completely. And so when we again, say several states, it's like the governors of several states have joined together to file in Texas. Yes. And one of the reasons they filed in Texas is because it's a more conservative court. That's right. Whereas California is a more liberal court. And so people are kind of picking their jurisdiction they based do. on what they want to have happen. Exactly. Right. Okay. So it sounds like there's still a lot up in the air with DACA. Yes, it is. Um, it would be highly unusual for the Supreme Court to make any decisions right now most likely they will allow it to go through the lower courts then be appealed and then take uh, an appeal from a higher court case that addresses most of the concerns in all those cases so they don't need to hear more than one case uh, this could take a, at least a year if no longer to go through this process so what about the people right now who are here under daca um, they should know that they really don't have a status, uh, a legal status, and I highly recommend that people don't put off re renewing their DACA. Um, as of right now, you are able, if you are able to do so, you can do it um, with a year before it lapses, so you can file it even after you renew it for, uh, you know, the first year, you can file for a renewal because it takes a while for them to process it. And um, sure, call our office and schedule a consultation. And we may be able, in there are cases where we were able to find actually a legal basis for you to obtain a more permanent status where you can eventually become a citizen. Um, each case is different. So, um, and do not leave the country without an advanced parole because doing so um, without one, you may not be able to, to come back. And because you didn't have a legal status, yes. you might be banned from coming back for 10 years for 10 or years. permanently. Yes. So that's, you know, a big thing right now. And the, um, and also the, they're not letting, if you were DACA, lapses they're not letting people renew it because it's lapsed so yes, that's why you have to keep it active don't let it lapse no, okay because they don't uh, receive new applications so you cannot apply for it okay um thank you everyone for watching again uh please call us and all your questions to us and um, like don't forget, and share and yes don't forget your likes and shares invite help, your friends to come help other people to see our video yes and i've seen a few people watching so thank you have a great weekend bye